The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Hi, welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. Today's show is about something that has to work for us or we got problems. It's our kidneys. And the reason I bring this up, uh, about 80% of kidney disease uh, is caused by type 2 diabetes, type 1 a little bit uh, also, uh, and uh, through proper nutrition and exercise, we could prevent most of that disease. Remember I said 80% is caused by diabetes. We know how to get rid of diabetes. You see that in my other shows. So this is full of good news. Uh, I do think what you need to do is to gain at least the beginning of knowledge from what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, and then uh, seek other opinions, maybe read other books, maybe speak to a doctor, speak to a renal doctor. But uh, I think you need to participate uh, in this discussion uh, and seek some more knowledge even than mine because I tell you what I think most of the people, they're letting you have the disease. You can get rid of diabetes about six weeks. Are they teaching you that? If not, uh, I would uh, start reading some of my things or look at other TV shows I've done, um, YouTube, Rudy Cashman, uh, diabetes, renal disease, a lot of information will pop up. So I'm trying to educate you, but you must participate uh, in this somewhat. Otherwise, if you're on the path to kidney disease, in the end, they'll dialyze you and, and then hand you a kidney. And believe me, that's a lot of work. Uh, and they may not even find one for you. So, uh, but the good news is uh, that you can stop kidney disease most of the time, not all the time, you can prevent it from advancing. A lot of people that they like, I'll talk, tell you about the stages of kidney disease, ones that were in advanced stages, I've been able to, by teaching the patient, to call it to a halt and reverse the stage of kidney disease a bit, saving them a renal transplant. That's kind of big, okay? So let's start the, the knowledge here now. Uh, I refer a lot to a book, I'm gonna hold it up for you, uh, Stopping Kidney Disease, uh, written by Lee Hull, H-U-L-L. -L. I have found this to be a fantastic book. Fantastic book, okay? And uh, Lee Hull, H-U-L-L, -L. It, it's a little thick, you can get it on the internet real cheap, or you can come here to the library and, and uh, borrow it uh, for a while. I think it's only like 17 bucks for this huge book. And what it's all about, Lee Hall was not a doctor, a patient who was told he needed a renal transplant uh, and it decided uh, to, uh, he wasn't too interested in that, so it started seeking knowledge, and he gained enough knowledge uh, then. So that was 20 years ago. He was able to stop and reverse his kidney disease significantly, never had a transplant, uh, and uh, I doubt he'll have one in the future. But he's got in there hundreds, maybe a thousand scientific references. So this is coming from science. I've never spoken to a renal doctor, ever read the book. I think that's a mistake uh, because 
uh, if you can avoid going through dialysis and a renal uh, transplant. Uh, uh, and believe me, that involves a, a lot of work. Uh, and uh, sometimes they don't even find a kidney. So uh, let, let's get on the road, okay? And uh, so, you know, your kidneys are kind of in the f flank here, about almost the size of a fist, or you got one on both sides. What's good about that, some people are born with only one, but a, a, a normal other kidney that gets a little bigger, it's able to do that. Even they have to remove one of your kidneys, uh, the other one will enlarge itself to, to, to uh, work a little better, and you're going to have a normal life. And that's uh, uh, good news, okay? So th they're located in the retroperitoneal space, easy to get at. Now they even operate sometimes just uh, with a little tube. So things are getting easier, but we want you to, to be able to avoid all that, okay? So this Lee Hall book, I think it's great. He also uh, has a cookbook, uh, and, and he's teaching you how to eat differently. He's saying most of these problems uh, can, frankly, uh, be solved by proper nutrition. Excellent cookbook. I've got a patient uh, that's stage four kidney disease. She didn't want a transplant, and I have a cooking out of this book. She's lost 30 pounds, looks like a movie star, uh, and and I don't know what the future holds, uh, but uh, that's a pretty advanced stage. To uh, I like to catch it at an earlier stage. It would be a lot easier, but very, very interesting. Uh, uh, so I encourage you to look at that. He also is part of an organization uh, called kidneyhood.org. I will look at this, especially if you're kidney disease. Look at that, kidneyhood.org. Uh, I myself, the, about a week ago, spoke to Lee Hall. Yeah, he makes himself available. I couldn't I believe it. The patient and I, and a cook, which I use to teach a patient how to cook properly, spoke to Lee Hall on the phone a week ago Friday. Yeah, so he, he's a very, what was it, Thursday, a very uh, thoughtful uh, in, individual. So I encourage you to uh, participate in your health care, okay? So uh, the information is based on extensive research. This is full of research papers, okay? Uh, but I would say this too, while you're looking, you follow advice of your doctor, don't stop medications unless it's okay with them, uh, with your family doctor or a renal specialist, but I still want you to gather information, you can discuss it uh, with, with your uh, uh, doctor. Uh, and uh, so uh, he feels that current kidney diets are killing us. And after reading all this, not, I'm a wellness doctor, I'm not a, a kidney doctor. I agree. It, that book makes a lot of sense. Uh, and my, ki my, kidney, my patient uh, had diabetes uh, and kidney disease, 80% of kidney disease and diabetes. Her, her diabetes is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her, her fasting blood sugar is 85. Yeah, three months worth, three months. And if you do this and you have diabetes, do frequent blood testing because if you're eating right, which I'll show you after a while, your blood sugars uh, will return to normal and you won't need all those medications. So get one of these monitors and check your blood sugar four times plus uh, a day, okay? Uh, so, uh, current diets, which these renal doctors are recommending, or, or their practitioners, their nurses, uh, carry a high renal acid load, and I'll tell you what that means, and, and a protein load. Uh, some, although kidney fu uh, function is at different stages, I'll tell you about these different stages shortly. and, and the diet they recommend is the same for every say, stage. That's a mistake. Lee points it out, and I agree. There are different stresses on your kidney, and, and it should be handled differently. Uh, so uh, if you don't get educated, uh, you will miss out in these different options, okay? Kidney disease deaths for 100,000 vary from a lot of states. 
depending uh, on what people are eating, how much they're exercising, uh, what kind of a job public health is doing. For example, in Mississippi, 21.7% of the people die per 100,000, okay? In Michigan, 14.7. Yeah, Ohio, 15 per 100,000. So it's different states eating differently, different advice, okay? Uh, you are 700% more likely to die from kidney disease in Mississippi and than in Vermont. What does that mean? That means to you get information, get information. Uh, so a uh, good lab test to run, uh, we'll talk about different ones here, is the GFR, Grimerlo filtration rate, okay? Uh, uh, so that the, the a, 110, 120 would be the highest, okay? Usually be a young person without disease. As we get older, it naturally retreats a bit down to 80, 70, and you're 80 years old. Um, unless you have other things going on, I wouldn't worry uh, too much. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, uh, and, and there are many kidney factors which uh, affect uh, your kidneys, you know, from the sodium to the potassium, the phosphorus type of food that you're eating, we'll, we'll uh, go through that. Uh, and treating kidney disease outcomes in this c country, if you rank the world, 172 countries, you know what we rank? 66. Mm -hmm. We have a right a large amount of type 2 diabetics. We have a large amount of people with kidney disease, but our industry, medical industry, uh, they're not teaching you what to do. The information is out there. Uh, and information must be correct, or maybe nobody's following it, but, but again, I think it is us physicians in the end that are responsible. Mm -hmm. And do the best that we can for you, which I'm doing today. Uh, so, why did this happen? Why did we rank only 66? Uh, Lee Hall thinks it's because a lot of money to be made in not getting you well. Biopsies, pay money, drug companies, uh, surgeries. Good example would be the cigarette industry. Uh, it, it took many years, lawsuits. Uh, class action suits till we finally brought the cigarette people partially to their knees. The same thing is happening uh, in type 2 diabetes. We're letting people have it. It's not difficult to get rid of type 2 diabetes. You hear me on my YouTube shows all the time. About six, eight weeks, your disease will be gone. Mm -hmm. Proper eating, eating the right food. Uh, so I... Uh, be open-minded here. Uh, and when we talked about glomerular filtration rates a minute ago, when you get down to around 20 or so, uh, 15, people get on dialysis, renal transplants. But what I'm going to teach you today, how to stop the rate of progression down to 20, 15, 10, you need a kidney. Uh, and especially st starts becoming important when your GFR is 60 or so. So when you get tested and screened by your doctor, be sure uh, that you uh, get a, uh, a, a GFR. And uh, why should you aggressively manage uh, your kidney disease if you have it? You live longer. You may lead a normal life, okay? And uh, uh, because a lot of the complications of kidney disease uh, lead to uh, early death, mm -hmm. a lot of miserable things, even getting dialyzed, you get it four times a week or whatever they decide. You have to be dialyzed later for hours while they get uh, taking your blood and delivering their blood back after it's been, been cleansed. If you have a transplant, you got to stay on steroids and, and, uh, and uh, 
which make you gain weight and, and make, uh, if you have diabetes, uh, make it worse, uh, difficult life. I like to teach you today how to avoid that. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about stages of kidney disease, GFR rate, okay? Um, uh, stage one is greater than 90 GFR, okay? And, and you may have some kidney damage, but, but uh, 60 to 89 uh, it, it involves uh, some kidney damage, uh, uh, and uh, uh, things are starting to get worse. You may, you may feel tired, worn, worn out, for example. Uh, stage 30 to 60, uh, things start getting uh, serious, uh, but you still have time to stop it and reverse it through proper lifestyle, which we will discuss. About 50 to 29, we're talking about severe. If you don't do something soon, you'll be on dialysis. And then it's end stage disease, less than 15. Uh, and uh, so, and, and how do they determine the GFR? It's a measure of the creatine in your blood. Creatine is a breakdown product of muscle. Uh, when muscle breaks down, so it's proteins, those amino acids, and creatine is about 70% of it. And they use that in the calculation of the GFR. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so increase your creatine, and you're less likely uh, uh, to f go further down in, in kidney disease. Okay. Uh, and that's from 30 to 60, you should start aggressively treating this. See what industry is doing, they'll let you have that. They don't change things very much. Uh, uh, and then you go into dialysis and then transplant, and that's where the money is. I hate to bring that up, but uh, there's very little in the literature, uh, very uh, little about being aggressive about the beginning of kidney disease because to do that, you'd have to get rid of your type 2 diabetes, which I say you get rid of six to eight weeks. And I teach it in my YouTube shows, books I've written. Um, and uh, so, uh, and if you do have type 2 diabetes, remember I said 80% is what causes chronic kidney disease, get rid of it. Don't accept the pills. Sometimes a type 1 has to do that. but. But don't just stop your pills either without checking with your doctor. Uh, but you want to get rid of the root, the root cause of it, just to take insulin and metformin, which puts sugar into the cell. Well, what do you think? You think that makes the cell well? It's still got all the sugar in it, okay? So in the end, that's not, uh, not the, an the, the answer. And uh, so uh, the... Uh, we don't want to go to stage four or five. And uh, your life will be, you'll live 20, 40 years younger or you'll die 20, 40 years earlier if you don't act on it, okay? So, and avoid uh, 20, 30 years of disability, which could be significant, uh, which could be from a nursing home to getting dialyzed frequently. Uh, so people with kidney disease have higher rates of cardiovascular disease and cerebrovascular disease. And I think part of that uh, is because the majority are diabetic and the insulin uh, which uh, is levels which are elevated in diabetes causes vascular disease. Um, very well described in a book by Joseph Kraft, K-R-A-F-T, easy to read. You can see him on YouTube. Uh, in kidney disease, you have increased rates of cancer, 10, 10 to 80%. Mm -hmm. More common, for example, breast cancer, uh, more common with people with kidney disease. Increased rates of Parkinson's disease, 15%. Increased rates of Alzheimer's, dementia, increase 50% if you have kidney disease. But again, that's probably a reflection on diabetes, which is related to uh, dementia and, and, and uh, metabolism from bad uh, kidneys. Um, your life is cut short, 20, 40 years. Uh, increased risk of sexual dysfunction. Uh, and and uh, it, it can end up being uh, 
on dialysis, decreasing your, your life for a number of years. If over 60, that's about 4.5 years, over um, 40, about eight years, okay? And, uh, and especially females have an increased risk of osteoporosis and fractures uh, if they have kidney disease. The increased rates of depression affects the mind. Mm -hmm. Increased rates of suicide. Uh, yeah, about an 80% increase in suicides in people with kidney disease. Uh, the quality of life with kidney disease goes down. Not every time, but I, if you do something about it, uh, you may lift out of a depression. So, but you have some control. You must participate by gathering uh, information and acting on it and willing to take on your doctor. Who knows what doctor you're going to, but to, to tr speak to them about it, okay? Uh, and as the d disease progresses, your ability decreases. We don't want that. We want you to live to be 100 and tap dance with me. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, let's discuss uh, a, a little bit uh, the, the things that affected quite a bit protein you consume and, and also uh, talk about uh, acidic foods, but we'll review those in some detail so that you know about them, okay? And uh, what we're having right now is an epidemic of kidney disease in the country and in the world. Okay, the number one cause, diabetes. I already mentioned that uh, to you. The symptoms can include increased blood pressure, uh, for example. Uh, the World Health Organization says the leading, the leading cause is the type of food we're eating and the lack of exercise, okay? And uh, so, uh, in this country right now, we're treating mainly the serum phosphorus, the serum potassium, uh, uh, and sodium, okay? The uh, serum potassium, uh, phosphorus should be less than three. Potassium uh, should, run, should be uh, 35 to five, uh, uh, 3.5 to five, 3.5, that's grams. Okay. That, that would be milligrams, that would be normal. Sodium, no fixed figures, but they're thinking 1,500 to 2,500. So, uh, so what we're talking about is to treat the root cause of it. It's not just a script, okay? Uh, most diets, US diets, uh, work at the sodium, potassium, and phosphorus with high rates of uh, uh, potassium and phosphorus can kill you, so sodium. And uh, so uh, another thing to consider important uh, is your albumin, that's a protein, remember, albumin uh, level. And uh, so, uh, a muscle amino acid breakdown, okay? Uh, so that's important. And uh, if you have a low abdomen, uh, it causes inflammation in the body, oxidative stress, acidosis. Acidosis is another factor. We'll describe that in more detail. Stress, uremia. Uh, so uh, the albumin level in the blood and in the urine are uh, very, uh, very important uh, to ha be normal, okay? So albumin, the protein in your blood, affects many things in your body. Let's go over those a little bit. Uh, it affects your intravascular pressure, so it'll affect the blood pressure, okay? It affects the acid-base balance, which we will discuss in more detail. Uh, it has antioxidant, prevents oxidation of your chemicals. 
uh, it, uh, uh, it helps transport the fatty acids in your blood. Fatty acids uh, uh, are not transported properly in your blood unless they have a protein attached to it. Okay, and albumin is a well-known one. It has an anticoagulating effect, and the mild uh, anticoag effects can have value most of the time, sometimes not. Uh, it also affects your microvasculature integrity. So albumin does a lot. It's a big factor, and we need to pay attention to the amount of the blood and the amount in the urine. So it's a strong mortality predictor. So insurance companies who are trying to cherry pick as to who's going to die sooner than later will use G GGT, an enzyme, um, which uh, is about inflammation in the liver and in the blood, and they also get a uh, uh, serum albumin test and urine. So then they can predict much better how long you're going to live and see what the price of your insurance might be. Uh, so it, it's a, those are great indicators of what's going on in your body. So next time you get a physical, check the serum albumin and get the GGG test. Uh, uh, and, uh, and if the albumin increases, uh, if the albumin uh, 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 increases, then, then over a three-month period, you're winning the battle, okay? Remember, you, you want a higher albumin, not a lower level. So a rising albumin level, a protein, is, is good and going down uh, is bad. Something you, uh, you know, need to know about. Now let's talk about the acids. Remember Lee Hull says, what America we worry about mainly is potassium, so sodium, phosphorus. We don't look at the renal acid load. They think the protein and the renal acid load are two important indicators. So, uh, and uh, mainly we are focusing, uh, which I already mentioned, the sodium, potassium, and the phosphorus. So, uh, PRAL, that would be, is a term we use, potential renal acid load, PRAL, okay? So foods that have the most potential to change acidity or alkalinity, that's the acid, base is the alkaline uh, things, uh, are very important for you to know which are the foods, and I'll review those uh, with you a little bit. Our pH, which represents the balance of acid and alkaline, is very critical. You go way off either in either direction, and you might not survive. So it's very narrowly regulated by nature. Your body, okay? Increase acidic blood, which is usually bad, uh, and the level is 7.35 to 7.45. That range is what you want to be in, but if you're eating largely acidic foods, it'll below, drop below 7.35, and, and you're, you're gonna have a problem. And alkaline w limits will be 7.45, okay? So the kidneys make ammonia, ammonia, which has a pH of 11, uh, to keep the balance. It'll, if you're imbalanced, it'll secrete that to pull you out of acidity if it can. But there are situations where you can't and you may have a cardiac arrest and die, okay? Uh, the acids, are made from sulfur, uh, which are mainly in proteins. That's why a high protein diet uh, is an acidic diet. Mm -hmm. So when, when people eat meat seven days a week or bodybuilders take, you know, gotta take more protein, gotta take more protein. Uh, and it, most of it comes from meat, eggs, dairy, and, and many grains actually, okay? Fruits and veggies in the gut, I probably produce alkalinity, okay? Bicarbs, which help balance your acid-base balance. Uh, even mild increased acidity uh, can result in kidney failure. Yeah, 7.35 is normal. 7.2 could be a problem. 
could indeed uh, be a problem. Uh, and uh, so a smoking gun, Lee Hall feels, is it, it, your renal acid load. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they did a study to find out about acidity, alkalinity, uh, did a soybean and tuna study. So we got from vegetables uh, uh, to meat. And one stalk of a soybean uh, uh, results uh, in, in alkalinity, minus three alkalinity. Mm -hmm. uh, but tuna is seven to 10 uh, acidity, yeah. Yeah, it's meat, and I like tuna, but it's very acidic, okay? So uh, what he's saying is for kidney disease, the first option sh should be proper diet, uh, proper eating. Diet should be the first therapy, not pills, not dialysis, not transplants. It should be diet, and that makes sense considering what I say about type 2 diabetes, which can be reversed in one to three months. Mm -hmm. You follow it strictly sooner than that. You do intermittent fasting where you just, I'm talking about 16 to 8 just that day, not missing a day or anything like that. Very, very simple. You could double the speed. So learn something about intermittent fasting. You can hear me talk about it in other shows. And I have time, I'll speak about it uh, today too. Uh, so. Uh, and foods have different uh, acid uh, levels. So I want to just read you a, a couple uh, so you get the idea uh, because acidosis, you know, is, is, is a big problem. So Lee Hall's book reviews this, different foods, reviews different foods. Let me give you an example. Uh, uh, the uh, red wine minus Two, so we, that's mineral water minus one. These are more alkaline, yeah. Coffee, thank God, minus 1.4, okay. Butter, 0. 0.6, uh, 0. 0.6 acidic. Margarine, but these are, you know, olive oil zero, sunflower seed oil zero, so those are fairly uh, healthy. Uh, but let's say eat some trout, brown trout, 10.8 on the rating scale. Mm -hmm. Herring, seven. Cod filet, 7.1. Hot ox, 6.8. So foods you think are actually very healthy if you get kidney disease, uh, not so. Uh, those are highly acidic foods and not good for your kidneys. Well, what about an apricot, minus 4.8? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A banana, minus 5.5. I eat a banana a day, I keep the doctor away, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, interesting one is raisins, minus 21. So raisins are extremely uh, 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 healthy. And uh, walnuts actually are acidic, 6.8. You wouldn't believe that, but it's true. And it's, but you can get this book, the huge tables in there, so. Uh, Asparagus, uh, again, alkaline, 0.4, as you expect. Broccoli, minus 1.2. Here's a good one. Spinach, hey, I got you. Spinach, minus 14. Zucchini, minus 4.6. But you knew that already. I didn't tell you something you don't really know. You know those are healthy foods. Uh, and uh, brown rice, I always tell people, rice is sugar, can't be be healthy. Sugar's the booger and the hooker. <laughs> okay. Uh, brown, brown rice, 12.5 acidic, as, as I would expect. Okay. And beans, minus 3.1. We know beans are healthy. Uh, interesting. Lunch meat, now here is, a, here you're getting hit with bullets. Okay. Lunch and meat, 10.2, very acidic. Turkey, 9.9, .9. you think it's a health food, but it's not. So uh, he has them in great detail in here, but I just want to give you some idea, okay? And uh, uh, 
so key to halt chronic kidney disease. Uh, it's a produce market, not the pharmacy. But don't stop your drugs or anything like that till you discuss it with your doctor. I'm not your doctor here. I'm, I'm just giving you information to start doing something about it, okay? Uh, and, uh, and your health will be better if you eat a nutrient-dense diet, okay? So what is Lee Hall saying? He is saying the renal acid case is open and shut case. No arguing about it. It's clear cut. The proper foods to eat are right there, okay? So I think that's kind of important. Uh, and, and to summarize a little bit, what he's saying here on page 70 of this great uh, book is that high acid diets are associated with heart disease, which is the last thing we need. Makes sense to me. Alkaline diets, the other side, may, may have a renal protective effect, slowing the decline in our kidneys. Mm -hmm. No data suggests that high acid diets are good for us. Acidosis is associated with bone and muscle loss. Acidosis may reduce vitamin D synthesis. And uh, so does a direct correlation exist between bicarb levels and albumin levels? Okay. And uh, if you pick up a kidney or renal diet book, it says you should be eating meat or most grains. Throw it away, Lee Hall says. And I agree, because I, I read all this, this uh, literature. So now let's talk a little bit about the protein debate, remember? We need to watch the sodium, phosphorus, potassium. Uh, fine. And uh, uh, what about protein? Uh, the literature is not open and shut as, this, as it is about the renal acid diet, OK? But 90% uh, of the information uh, is known, OK? And uh, we are obsessed about protein as a nation. We think we need to follow high protein diets. Let me tell you something you may not know. If you eat in a day more protein than your body needs, bodybuilders, for example, are a little bit obsessed about it. They'll take an extra protein away, for, for, for example. Your body only needs a certain amount of protein. And when it gets beyond what it needs every day, does it convert it to fat? No. You know what it converts it to? Sugar. Yeah. You're taking in more sugar. So just eat the amount of protein you need, but not more and not less. How much do we need? How much protein do we need? Standard thing I'll tell you is 0.8 grams per kilo. OK? OK? Uh, so that would be about 60 grams a day for a 165-pound person. OK? Uh, and I'll recommend low-protein diets for kidney problems. And that would be 40 grams of protein versus normal. Remember, 165-pound person. 60 would be average, OK? Low-protein diet would be about 40 grams a day. Very low-protein diet would be 22.5 grams a day. But normally, that would be supplemented because you're below what you need, OK? Uh, and uh, referring again uh, to his uh, uh, book, uh, let me give you an example the grams of protein that, for example, one chicken breast, what do you guess? 43 grams. You're close to what you need for the day. Mm -hmm. And the extra that you eat, you get a steak on top of that. In the end, by morning, it will, will have been converted to sugar. Mm -hmm. A cup of soybeans, 68. Yeah. One cup of soy burns is probably all the protein you need for the day. Any other protein you eat will be sugar. Wow. Three cups of milk, 24. One scrambled egg, 
22. Just to give you some idea, the rest of those figures, you know, are in there, but it's interesting just to, to look at that. So we do have a protein workload in us, okay? And it can also be measured by a serum urea uh, and creatine, again, which we talked about before. So eating a high-protein diet doesn't solve uh, the decreased albumin protein level. If you get a low level because you've been urinating it out, uh, eating a high-protein diet, incidentally, to study it will not solve the problem. Interesting, interesting. So uh, when talking about the proteins, it's all about the nitrogen, and we can measure it by getting a BUN. Okay, that's common. Uh, so the BUN is used, it is used to measure not just the proteins, but other chemicals in the blood. So uh, it is used to measure waste products, okay? Nitrogen content. So, uh, uh, and, and for example, a veggie burger will be 0.65. So vegetables have proteins. Mm -hmm. Beef would be 17, to give you some idea, okay? And uh, so soybeans have about half of the uh, amount of protein in it. Remember, protein is a stress factor. Question is how much? Uh, uh, so, uh, the, remember we spoke about the uh, GFR, the gramolar filtration rate, uh, and th let me give you some rates in whether people with this have symptoms. Uh, if your GFR is less than 15, you're in kidney failure. Mm -hmm. Can that be changed? I'm not certain yet. The literature would say no, but I've got a patient that's in kidney failure. They get rid of their diabetes, and her GFR is raising up. I don't know. We'll see. Huh? Uh, less than 30 can and occasionally lead to coma. Mm -hmm. Less than 50 uh, generally have insulin resistance, mostly probably diabetic. GFR 55, fatigue, reduced stamina. 30 to 60, can have cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some might say, hey, you got Alzheimer's disease. When if you corrected this, you probably still can at 30 to 60, that cognitive impairment might go away. Uh, less than 60, uremic symptoms may be present, reduced, and you might be well. 100 to 120 is normal. I just wanted to give you some idea uh, that indeed the GFR is, uh, is uh, important, that, that it affects uh, you, okay? And uh, once you're diagnosed with kidney disease, eating eggs, dairy, chicken, beef, or fish is a mistake. Mm -hmm. That would be a mistake. No place, they have no place in your diet. Uh, to, to eat that way, as Dr. Lee Hall says, is, I mean, Lee Hall, Lee Hall, uh, is 1950s advice. So, See, see what they're advising you. You may be, be advised uh, by a nurse practitioner who's been trained in that, or, 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 or your doctor. Usually they have to be using a nurse practitioner now, and you don't know, ask them, Did you, have you ever read the book of Lee Hall? I'll give you a free tennis lesson if they, if they say yes. I've never met a provider ever read this book. Uh, when, when, seems like kind of critical, okay? And uh, so uh, albumin uh, is the smallest protein uh, in the blood and urine, okay? Uh, so the BUN uh, measures 
uh, the severity of inflammation too, okay? So let's talk about protein, urea, protein in the urine, Al albinemia, which would be the amount of albin in the blood, microalbinemia, micro the small, uh, any of these can be seen in the phrotic syndrome, the phrotic syndrome, and they can reflect the severity of it, uh, okay? Uh, so microalbuminuria it measures the amount of albumin in, in, in the urine. Uh, and you know then you're going to have a low alb albinema, you're going to have a low albumin in the blood because it's, it's in the urine, it's being filtered out. Um, uh, and it's the smallest protein, so it leaks the first. It can tell you when kidney disease is starting, especially albumin uh, can be a hint. If you were to look into the urinal, uh, usually when protein hits the water, it would be bubbly. Now, we have a certain amount uh, per day normally, okay? So you can't <laughs> make a decision on how many bubbles you have. I was going to tell you some interesting. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, and the, but these are, can be the earliest, in, low albumin or albuminuria can be, can be early indicators of heart and kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Important blood and urine test when you get your physical done, which I had done a couple of days ago, and I asked them to check that uh, for me. And I also asked them to get a blood sugar and a serum insulin, which is the path to diabetes. Let's see what it is, okay? At 137 pounds, probably it's okay, but you never know. Thin people can also be diabetic. Yeah. And, uh, so that's important to, to uh, check that. A lot of people with nephrotic uh, syndrome uh, have edema. A lot of kidney patients will have swelling uh, uh, related to the amount of sodium uh, that is uh, in, in, uh, in the blood. And uh, uh, so uh, inflammation is what's killing us, okay? And you can measure that by CRP, C-reactive protein. Yeah, and that should be, uh, you know, two, maybe under two. And uh, gives you indication something's not right. And, uh, and these things can have, you can measure mortality, the length of your life somewhat. We have some protein uh, in the urine. And if you look at a graph, you know, it's a certain level. Uh, if you have microalbuminuria, okay, the smallest protein, uh, death rates, um, people die sooner. Uh, and then a more advanced disease, um, uh, you don't live as long, okay. So uh, TNF is another, like CRP is another factor that is measured um, uh, in, in some people, okay. So I think I've given you an idea that kidney disease is complex. Number one is you want to prevent it by preventing diabetes in the first place. That's 80% of it. Uh, and, and, and once you have it, that you can stop it levels uh, up to down to maybe 40 or so. Uh, you can seriously revert it. 40 to 20, you can, you can some cases stop it. Uh, again, it has to be through uh, a proper uh, nutrition. And nutrition is what I'm going to speak about now a little bit. Uh, if you do have kidney disease, I would certainly look at this website, kidneyhood.org. Get to know these people because they will answer your questions and they'll even talk to you in person. I've done it along with one of my patients. Isn't that a wonderful thing? There are many things available, you know, that uh, do that. Uh, and uh, so on the cover it says, Stopping Kidney Disease Food Guide. Improve your GFR, the glomerular flotation rate. Find out what it is, okay? If you have physical done and they don't have that there, you get some blood testing, urine testing, uh, so you want that. You want the serum albumin, 
CRP tell you information, okay? Serum insulin to see if you have diabetes or on the path to, to diabetes is important. Uh, and uh, and uh, he speaks a lot about measuring your blood and urine again in 90 days. So if you're having changes like I did with this uh, lady stage four kidney disease that I've been coaching along with Kelly, who teaches uh, cooking, uh, proper cooking, um, we repeated her blood work in 90 days. We like this. So if you're trying something new, something different, check with your doctor, but check their blood work about every 90 days. They, things don't change like that in, 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 in renal disease. Or some things will. I mean, the blood sugar uh, will or some potassium might. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, what's also good about this book, uh, he, has, there are pictures of the recipes in there. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, and gives you the nutrition facts. Uh, and uh, let's through through this one in a minute. I just opened it up. Jack fruit crab cakes. I mean, I'm hungry. That sounds awfully good. So here's a picture and, and it has a little thing, the nutrition facts in there, exactly uh, what's in it. Uh, and, and as I see the word ORAC, O-R-A-C, that tells you the nutrient density, such a thing as ORAC scoring, okay? Like kale would probably have a thousand points. And uh, yeah, more than that, more than that. And uh, maybe a hundred thousand points. And uh, the, uh, but jackfruit is an excellent fruit, very highly nutrient dense. You, you can see it, I, I saw it at a, um, Kmart the other day, I saw it there. Uh, and he gives you the, the, the wrote out the recipes. Uh, and uh, he even writes down there, prep time, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cooking time, 20 minutes. Look at the next page. Marinated carrot salad. I mean, does that sound healthy? Gives you the recipe, the directions the nutrition facts, the 100 calories in it, even tells you the amount of calories in it. On that jackfruit crab cakes, 235 calories, you, you can see here. Uh, and so what's you really recommending is a nutrient dense food, okay? Uh, certainly there's some protein present there is protein in vegetables. Yeah. Broccoli has got a lot of protein in it, so you don't need to eat animals to get protein. And remember, we have a limit of protein that our body will tolerate, uh, and the rest will be converted to, you know the answer now, sugar. Uh, so high, teen, high protein diets uh, have, have limit. He even has uh, desserts in it here, uh, uh, for example. And here for lunch, he has a beet salad with candied or spiced pecans. Hey, candied? Yeah. But, and uh, uh, the, uh, he has pecan have, halves in there, olive, canola, some uh, avocado oil. Remember? I I'm not for a low-fat diet. I'm for a low-carbohydrate moderate protein, 50, 60% fat. And the reason being is that good fats are good for you. They, what they do is take your appetite away and generally you have uh, uh, weight loss uh, with it. If you're eating a low sugar food, your sugar level will drop over time in intermittent fasting, remember time. Uh, the insulin level will drop down, and then it, when the insulin level drops, it'll open up the fat cells to get you energy, uh, and that'll get in the blood system and hooked uh, to the protein and goes t to the liver, and it's made into ketones, and you use them for energy. Mm. 
the brain can use them. The uh, your appetite goes away. The full of high energy. You don't have the ups and downs which sugar has. The sugar goes up and down. The insulin has it goes down, then goes back up and up and down. Uh, uh, fats, ketones don't do that. So you will feel very uh, energetic. Uh, we're not talking about meat seven days a week. I'm talking about to eat a little bit of meat and 56 percent good fats, guacamole, uh, 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 coconuts, uh, some uh, beans, some uh, things that are uh, very healthy for you. 50 years they told us fat was the problem. It was a lie. And what are they switched to a sugar diet? Now the whole nation uh, has got overweight or some that look normal, they have diabetes because they have fat in their liver, fat in their gut. So get um, uh, uh, tested. And uh, it has smoothies uh, uh, in here. I think it's a very good cookbook. And, and my patient that had with advanced renal disease, who lost their diabetes, and, and uh, I wonder if a GFR might continue to Im improve. I like it to be treated at stage two or three or four is a little bit advanced, but I'm coaching her. She, she doesn't want new kidneys, so uh, I've devoted my time to her. And uh, I even uh, hired a cook, which I'm paying because she couldn't afford it. I'm paying the cook myself, uh, and we test her in three months recently. Uh, so uh, in, in summary, number one is I want you to avoid kidney disease to begin with. The best way to do that, don't get type 2 diabetes, okay, which is self-inflicted the majority of the time. You can watch my other TV shows. Um, YouTube, Rudy Cashman, diabetes, maybe 50 shows will show up, teach you how to stop, prevent, reverse uh, diabetes. For years, I've been, been doing that show. Uh, so we don't get that. And that will pre prevent most kidney disease. But if you got it, I think uh, uh, you can prevent it. I think we can stop it or slow it down. But, but this is going to take significant information because your doctors will be ignorant, most of them, of this information. You need to bring it with you, maybe the books or TV, TV shows or whatever, and, and, and teach them, they change the medication. I do not. So you must participate uh, in your health care. Uh, although on Fridays, I see people for free at the Three Rivers Pharmacy, Friday afternoons, like tomorrow. I've been doing it for years. Uh, and talk to you about it and, and tell you things you ought to look at, things you ought to read. So I'm about information, OK? I've declared war on diabetes. Why? Because everybody else is just touching it. You have the disease because everybody's making a lot of money. I don't agree with that, OK? Uh, and uh, I feel the same way now of kidney disease. I've declared war on kidney disease. My bullets are information. They're information. And then I want to help you make up your mind and to seek other advice. I'm not the last word here, but believe me, there are 1,500 books in my basement, and, and I've reviewed most of the scientific papers of Lee Hull, who um, I think I like to applaud that Lee Hull wrote that book, put out the cookbook, and you can reach him on the internet. I mean, you know, who's he standing next to? You know, we have to give him a lot of credit. Uh, uh, but I'm providing the information uh, 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 for you. So watch my other shows or look me up in person for, to, for uh, 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 consultation. And I see people for free. This information is for free. So you know where my heart is located. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Incidentally, just before this, uh, I, I was invited to uh, go to the Glenwood Middle School on, on Vance. And you know what? They made me the principal for the day. Beautiful school. I mean, there it was, oh my gosh, 80% I, 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 of tenants, even with this virus. Incidentally, uh, if you have renal disease, diabetes, you're much more likely to come down with the virus. Uh, 
and that's because a virus doesn't have a metabolic system. It likes sugar in the cells. Think about that a, a, a little bit, okay? So uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this show. I did it because I love you, care about you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.